You know, this isn't the subcompact saying, oh, I only grew this big and, and that's it. And the Kubota saying, oh, I grew a little bit bigger and here we go, right? Shame on all the salesmen who do not pretty much force their buyers to get skid steer quick attached. They're all creating the most horsepower, you know, the best features or whatever you can cram into that frame size. I mean, I, I'm still enamored. I'll probably tell folks about that for a long time. Again, hands down Kubota. I like this style. This one sucks worse in my opinion. This one also sucks. I'm going to call it a wash. If you're watching this video and you didn't watch the facts first, comparing the 1025 versus the B2601, watch that first, then come back to this one. And I've got three things to tell you real quick, not related to the video, I just gotta share them. Number one, I got a lot of dirty equipment sitting here, okay? The stuff just came in, I haven't had a chance to clean it up, so I'm asking for your forgiveness. It probably looks pretty good sitting out here right now, even in the direct sunlight, but I promise you it's gonna look even better after we get to the detail job. Next, I'm crazy excited about this Bama Light brush fire right here. You guys might have seen some of those tractor mounted versions on Tractor Time with Tim. This is a skid steer version right here. I've had this thing sitting here for, I don't know, a month, maybe six weeks, maybe longer than that even. Been waiting on the right skid steer to get in to match up with it and then put it to work. So I just got this set up and hooked up today. I demoed it out here just in the parking lot. No, not ripping up the parking lot. Although, oh, is that foreshadowing? I do like to do that. But the point being, I'm gonna have some videos on this thing soon. These things are amazing. You can get them for a tractor, you can get them for a skid steer. Watch Tractor Time with Tim, you'll see it in action. I can get one of these ordered for you. Lastly, this crumbling parking lot and that big old nasty white trailer back there. Oh man, they're gonna be gone real soon, okay? This parking lot's getting refinished. That trailer's gonna move on out of here. I can't wait, I'm so excited. So things are only looking up around Good Works tractors. <laughs> Okay, so I cherry picked a few questions or comments, you know, from the last video, the facts about the 1025R versus the B2601. I'm gonna go ahead and answer those first, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion on the whole situation. So first up, pricing, okay? So pricing is a tough thing, okay? It is so hard to get an apples to apples comparison on what a standard setup would be versus a standard setup would be, you know? So John Deere versus Kubota, it's very challenging, okay? Whether it's new or used or the size of deck or the features and the options, all that stuff varies and it's just that information is not readily available. So I dove into it a lot. I kind of looked at the new versus the used, the, the, the models, you know, and, and both sides of it there. What it comes down to is what I can tell on average about a $2,500 price difference there between a 1025R, $2,500 more to get to a Kubota B2601. So that's not terrible. It really is not that bad to go from a subcompact to a compact and have that kind of a price jump at all. Now keep in mind, and I want to stress this because you're going to have John Deere dealers that alone are going to vary probably $2,500 and the same thing with Kubota. So if you're in a certain area who has a high priced John Deere dealer versus a low priced Kubota dealer or vice versa, you're going to see differences in those you know, those, those prices there. So just keep it in mind, it's a grain of salt. And this is just on average. When I'm kind of looking all over the country and kind of seeing what, what's going on there with pricing and, and that's what I came up with. Next one up, and I didn't even think about this, was the uh, three-point test that I did, okay? So first of all, I'll get into my opinion a little bit here, but that three-point lift on the Kubota, that was insane. That was incredible. We didn't even max it out. I just didn't have enough uh, space on the three-point hitch there to add any more weight. So that thing was just cranking and cranking and just wouldn't stop. But what I didn't count was the actual mower deck. So it was already lifting that mower deck as well as what was on the three-point hitch. So that just makes it even that much more impressive. Why don't I do a comparison of a two series versus the Kubota B2601, okay? So, well, this is where it gets very complicated and um, a little bit messy, right? So first of all, I'm a used tractor dealer. I sell John Deere, I sell Kubota. You can tell it's mainly John Deere, but I don't care. I, I sell Kubotas, I, I like Kubotas. When I can get a nice condition, low hour Kubota in, I am more than happy to sell it because I think they're a great piece of equipment. But you have the B2601, you have the B2650 in Kubota. You have the, well, and you know, now you have the LX 202601 or the LX 3310, those models as well. So it gets convoluted. And the B2301, geez, the, the models just keep coming out of, out of nowhere. But, and then in the John Deere, you know, you have the John Deere 2025R, which in my mind is a 1025R HD or maybe just a one and a half series. Then you have the full frame 2032R and the 2038R. So these manufacturers, again, I'm telling you, this is intentional with John Deere, Kubota, and all the others. Give us that, that variation there. Make it really hard to get an apples to apples comparison. So keep that in mind. That kind of stuff is intentional. And, and I think it's okay, okay? It's, it's a lot better to have more choices to select from than not enough. But keep in mind that when we're comparing things, it is 
it's a lot different than the truck world in my opinion okay you're not comparing half tons and just seeing what they do all these tractors just vary so much where don't think you're really getting a true apples to apples comparison with any models that are out there and the last question was why was i comparing these two anyways this is a subcompact tractor and this is a compact tractor so how is that a fair fight well, you know what? I thought the same thing, but the truth is, is that this is a comparison that I was asked for repeatedly, just over and over. And primarily whenever I would compare a 1025R to a BX. And well, I guess that's where my opinion comes in. Like my dad always used to say, I'm hard on you because I love you, okay? So I'm not gonna stop telling you about this lube shuttle. Grease, okay? The most important way to protect your machine. Why? Because it's the one thing they have to do most often on your machine. Keep it greased, okay? And if you have an easy way to do that, not dealing with one of those traditional grease guns that leak all over the place, you can see it right here. What's it say? Rethink greasing. No plunger to pull back, no air gaps, no leaking grease, no wasted grease, no wasted time. You've got the steel cover on the top there. You undo that, you take it off, that's just to protect it, you know, and you got grease tubes here, all right? You can see there's no, there's no grease leaking out there, there's no mess here at all. You just take it off and you need to replace it. You can even refill these things if you want, but you get 5% off discount code GWT. I'm telling you, grease is your friend, okay? So uh, put it on there, take care of it. Go to the description below in the video or go to my website. You'll see where you can buy this stuff. Get 5% off discount code GWT. I'm going to break this opinion down to several different kind of categories or viewpoints or segments, you know, as you will, but I want to make sure I know what you guys are thinking as well. Share it below. Let everybody else who's watching, you know, who's going to read through those comments kind of have a different perspective. And that's something that you can provide, not me. Okay. I'm just one man here and I want to make that perfectly clear. So we all have our own perspectives. I don't speak for everybody. I speak just from my own experience. I don't I don't care if you disagree with me. That's perfectly okay. I don't have an issue with that. So, so feel free to leave a comment below. I love to hear what you have to say. So first up, I don't think there's any business comparing, if you're trying to do an apples to apples comparison between a subcompact and a compact, okay? This isn't the tractor's fault. You know, this isn't the subcompact saying, oh, I only grew this big and, and that's it. And the Kubota saying, oh, I grew a little bit bigger and here we go, right? These are up to the manufacturers, okay? There's standardized classification systems that are out there, okay? You have your subcompacts and your compacts and your uh, utilities and your ag and everything else, okay? And then even within uh, the compact, for instance, you have you know, a two series, three series, four series, kind of equivalent to a, a B series, uh, L series, and a, and, a, and a large L series. But then it gets even more convoluted beyond that, you know, between a, uh, a basic L versus a grand L or a 3E versus a 3R, and, and it just goes on and on. So it's, it's totally confusing. And on one hand, I get upset with manufacturers, these the John Deere, Kubota, and so on, for creating such confusion with all their uh, inconsistent modeling of numbers and you know, potential hard feelings for customers who buy something and, and not realizing it's not capable of doing this, you know? So on the other hand though, it's these same manufacturers who, if it's, if it's half ton trucks, for instance, you know, Ford, Chevy, and Dodge, they're all creating the most horsepower, you know, the best features or whatever you can cram into that frame size. So on the same token, you know, with a truck competition, why wouldn't tractor manufacturers take the subcompact class, for example? Why would you not want to absolutely max out, just cram in every possible feature, get every ounce of capability out of that machine to say, I'm the absolute best, right? The problem that I have is that Kubota hasn't done that. You know, their, their BX series, in my opinion, is not anywhere near what the 1025R is. And so, again, coming back to those comments of why I even did this comparison here between the 1025R and the B2601, it's from all those folks saying, that's not a fair comparison. You need to compare the 1025R to something that's classified as a compact tractor. I mean, how is that a fair comparison? Why would you not compare a two series, another compact tractor versus a compact tractor? So that's just my opinion it's not a fair comparison at all to begin with you know compare a subcompact to a subcompact it's kubota's choice on what they want to determine to be their subcompact machine whether it's on equal par whether it exceeds the capability of of john deere's or mahindra's or coyotes or anybody else's out there or if it's less capable what else are you going to go by besides that standard classification system it's not like kubota john deere anybody else didn't know that classification system was out there they're building the equipment to fit within those parameters so a couple points about lift capacity. We'll start with the front end loaders. So the BX is going to lift 
to a higher height than the 1025R, which is totally expected for a compact tractor to do over a subcompact. That makes sense, okay? So it lifted, I think, roughly 80 pounds more to about six inches higher, okay, for that maximum capacity to full height for, for each one of these. But keep in mind that actually didn't include the tooth bar that was on here, so that gap is really probably even smaller than that. I will say though that part of the problem I have with the Kubotas is that they always seem to lift less weight than I think they should on their front end loaders, okay? And I think part of that comes down to their geometry here, and that's just kind of looking at it, right? Uh, the buckets, the loaders on the John Deere's always seem to sit a little bit closer uh, to the tractor itself with the Kubotas, they're always pushed out a little bit further. And so the further out you go, whether it's the loader, the three point, doesn't really matter. The further out you go from the base of your lifting point here, the less weight you're going to lift. And so that's just physics, right? You know, that's just how it works. But that's the kind of the, the problem I have with that. I don't know, I'm sure there's a reason for it, you know, because all of their tractors are like that. And otherwise, I don't know why you wouldn't tuck it down here a little bit more and make it be able to lift more weight. But on the flip side, literally the flip side, the back side of this thing, the freaking three point hitch on the Kubota here, it just blew my mind. I never thought that I would run into a situation on this machine where I didn't have enough weight or enough space to max this thing out. So on a subcompact, of course, it's a different story. It just doesn't take nearly as much weight to be able to accomplish that feat. But this guy, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a challenge to max it out. And it just lifted, was it 1,589 pounds and just kept going. It wasn't even hesitating at that. I was lifting it slowly because I didn't want the weight to fall off, but it had no problem lifting that up. I found that to be extremely impressive. Okay, so a few key areas where I'm gonna kinda pick a winner of my own opinion, okay, based on my own experience, based on what I think. Doesn't mean it has to be what you think. I, that's perfectly fine. Again, I wanna make that clear. Perfectly fine, my opinion, okay? So, um, one, I love that John Deere includes a standard quick attach bucket. You don't have to pay for a quick attach bucket. It's not, it, well, it might be proprietary, I don't care, but it doesn't mean you have to get an attachment from John Deere. You can get them from me, you can get them from a lot of, a lot of people. That's gonna be the exact same price for their system versus a Kubota. Sure, maybe there's more um, skid steer style quick attach items out there in general in the market. That's pretty obvious, but the point being, you can get a, an attachment for a John Deere quick attach from a lot of different places for the same price as a skid steer quick attach. So on the Kubota, you have to actually pay to get that quick attach option on there. It's going to come with a pinned on bucket, okay? I quote several um, uh, brackets to upgrade those pinned on buckets to quick attach every day. All right, so these are all folks that uh, either made the mistake themselves or somebody they bought a tractor from made the mistake, mistake in my opinion, of not getting that upgrade. And shame on all the salesmen who do not pretty much force their buyers to get skid steer quick attach adapters instead of a pinned on bucket. That's doing a disservice in my opinion. So next up on the belly mowers here, I really do like the John Deere. Um, it's gonna be a drive over as standard where the Kubotas I don't believe are. You can get a drive over mechanism as an upgrade. There's really not a auto connect as far as the PTO goes option on the Kubotas. It is an option on the John Deere's. If you see an auto connect deck on a John Deere, don't assume the PTO is auto connect. Always ask just to verify that the PTO shaft as well is also auto connect. Otherwise, it's gonna be a manual connect. But they're all gonna be drive over. I've talked about this before, but I love the three range hydro transmission, okay? That's not on the 1025R, it's not gonna be on the BX either, but once you get to the B series in Kubota, you gotta go to the 3R series in John Deere, but you get a three range hydro transmission. Some folks aren't gonna worry about it. Again, my opinion, okay? So I love that medium range. You can see it's in medium right now, okay? Even when I move it around here, I love the medium range. So that is a big deal for me, and I've talked about it even on the John Deere 2 series. Are you listening, John Deere? Probably not, but anyways, I don't know why you didn't put a three range transmission on your redesign to our series, but the wind goes to Kubota on this one. If I'm being honest, both of these machines lifted more than I thought they were going to on the three point hitch. I really didn't think either one of them were gonna be that impressive, you know, um, but I gotta give it to the Kubota. That thing's gonna win hands down. It's an incredible amount of weight that this thing lifts. I, I honestly, I can't even believe it. I would have never expected anywhere near that amount. Um, truly impressive. It wins all day long in that category by, not just because it lifts more than the, than the John Deere, because that's obvious it's going to lift more than that, but because it just kept going. Like the Energizer Bunny just didn't give a, a, a rip what was on there. It just lifted whatever it was. And I mean, I, I'm still enamored. I'll probably tell folks about that for a long time. 
and along those lines, I'm going to try to get it so you can see a little bit easier. But um, if you can see all these little holes here, okay, telescoping draft links, all right. Again, we're on the three-point hitch here. The John Deere does not have it. They're going to have the turnbuckle style of draft link where these, you just pull this little pin out, and then these three-point hitch arms just freely slide in and out there. That is a super awesome feature. And this is the basic B-series, okay. The B2650 is a fancy one. This is the basic B-series that still has these, while the 1025R, which is supposed to be the creme de la creme of subcompact tractors and it's a premium series tractor it has this stupid turnbuckle style of of uh, sway arms that are down there so again hands down Kubota I like this style okay so pay attention you do have standard fender mounted work lights here on the 1025R there are no work lights that come on uh, the Kubota I, I think it's just a disappointment in general that even this, I don't know why there are not more lighting options from tractor manufacturers. It's like, hello, people use tractors when it's dark outside, you know, give us the options that are on there. I mean, if you see a revenue opportunity, why would you not take advantage of it? You know, lights are an easy thing to add on to make options for all over the place. So just do it manufacturers, but at least you get a set here on the 1025R, you don't on the Kubota. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to mention steel versus plastic okay i'm just gonna mention it just because it's honestly one of the reasons why i don't have as many kubotas come in so you get a lot of folks that say i don't want a plastic tractor right like those john deers over there i want steel but at the same time i'm dealing with hundreds of customers a year who do not want a beat up dented up piece of junk looking thing you know i want so i want my equipment to run good i want it to look good and i turned down so many kubotas because they're just dented to all get out i mean it's insane how many of them are dented and and this one hopefully you can see um, but there's like a dent right here that's very light dent there's a dent right here there's a dent right here they're very small dents okay and then there's tons of little scratches that are all through here i don't know if you can see them or not i tried to do a close-up so you can see but this is the problem with metal is that it's going to show every blemish and i get it okay it's it's a tractor it's, it's going to get worked it's going to be used in a harsh environment i totally get it but it, it's still an expensive tool, okay? And so I want them to look good. And uh, the John Deere's, a lot of this stuff just buffs right out and they don't get dents like this, okay? And I've dropped a five inch tree on mine, nothing happened to it. So I'm just saying, I don't have issues with, you know, the plastic that's on these tractors. Yeah, I get it. A long time ago, if we're talking 20 plus years ago, um, early 2000s, that kind of thing. Yeah, those, those plastics were really brittle, you know, when they got colder, when they got older, when they were sun faded. But polymers like that have come a long way. Technology's advanced significantly, so you got to give it a shot. So we're going to talk about pedal configuration here. Hydrostatic pedal configuration, going forward or going reverse. On the Kubota, you push down to go forward, you push down with your heel to go in reverse. On the John Deere, you're going to push forward here to go forward, and you're going to push here to go reverse, okay? Now keep in mind, if you're in a vehicle right here, this is go forward and this is your brake. But on a tractor, like a John Deere tractor, this is go forward and then this is reverse. So that's a little funky, right? And on the Kubota over here, I absolutely hate pushing down with my heel. Sorry, I think I just spit there. I know some guys don't. I don't care how many. I have driven so many Kubotas. I, the point being, I've driven a lot of Kubotas. I like Kubotas, okay? I like Kubotas a lot. I hate the treadle pedal. I absolutely hate it. Doesn't matter what you do. Some guys love it. Some guys say this is stupid. You know what? This is stupid on the John Deere. Because why would you not make the go forward pedal the same as a vehicle? I mean, that's just... Why are you trying to make things difficult? I don't, I don't get it, manufacturers. Just set something up that's similar to an automotive design. Why would that be so challenging to do, you know? But regardless, so both of these kind of suck in their own way. Um, this one sucks worse, in my opinion. This one also sucks. I'm going to call it a wash. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Again, this is my opinion, all right? This is the opinion video. I'm allowed to have it. Make sure you check out that facts video as well. I'll post a link somewhere in here so you can see it. 1025R, B2601, nothing but facts, no opinion, no bias. This video here probably has some bias, but guess what? I still try to give it straight up as much as I can. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button underneath the video. Make sure you read through that description as well, okay? A lot of helpful links down there. Good stuff to buy, okay? Attachments and accessories for your tractors. Shoot, get a tractor from me as well. I can ship everything all over the country, all right? And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you check out the other videos on my channel. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.